Hi everyone, welcome back to Beyond Your Knowledge. So today we are going to be reviewing neurofibromatosis type 1 and type 2. So before we continue, I would like to share with you Matthew 5, 43, 45 and says that you have heard that it was said you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his song rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Amen. Hallelujah. So, praise the God. Praise God. So, now, neurofibromatosis type 1 and type 2 so what we can learn about this so before we continue so i would like to we are going to do basically a table so in the table we are going to have the diagnosis so um we're going to do it uh let's just do it blue uh better yeah so the letters in blue and then the the the, the the lines in black so so we're going to see the diagnosis so we're going to see the gene mutation, okay? We are going to see the located of gene mutated, oh, I mean loca location of mutated gene, okay, location of mutated gene. And one more thing we're going to see here, the main clinical features, okay? Now, so neurofibromatosis, all those things we're going to see here. Oops, sorry. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, you know what? Is uh, yeah, there? We go. Now it's better. Okay, so. When you think in <clears throat> the one of abromatosis, I think that one way to to remember some of those characteristics that we're going to see just just see what's going on here. So that's mean the word neuro, the word neuro, okay, and the word fibromatosis. So that's mean that the patient is going to have <clears throat> fibromas and is going to be involved in the neuro system, okay. Got it? Yeah, gotta just do it. So that the, <coughs> excuse me. So neurofibromatosis, we have two types. Neurofibromatosis type 1 and neurofibromatosis type 2. So because we're going to do versus each one. So here we're going to see neurofibromatosis type 1. And here we're going to see neurofibromatosis type 2. Got it? So neurofibromatosis type 1 so as we saw it is the, it is neurofibromatosis type 1 or also known as a von i'm going to start right, right here on the top because it's a, a long long word so also known as a von von recklinghausen disease <clears throat> so von rec so it's all together, but yeah, since we don't have too much room. So von Reck Lin Gaussen, okay, Gaussen disease, everybody's disease, okay. Von Reck Gaussen disease is the type 1 neurofibromatosis. Now the neurofibromatosis type 2, it is an F2 and also known as a Central neurofibromatosis. Sensitive this screen today, yeah. Um, yeah, so central, obviously, we're mentioning central neurofibromatosis. Yeah, okay. Now, <coughs> I usually remember so type 1 and type 2 I'm going to jump to the 
to the chromosome which is the location of the mutated gene because I mean for me it's easier to remember so norovamardus type 2 is going to be the chromosome 22 okay now in the norovamardus type 1 is going to be chromosome 21 no <laughs> no 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 but is the chromosome 17 okay so if you see neuromodus is 1 has 1 1 and chromosome 17 has 1 1 neuromodus is 2 has a 2 and chromosome 22 2 2 okay now where is the gene mutation so in the neuromodus is 1 so the nf or nf 1 tumor suppressor gene okay tumor suppressor gene codes the protein neurofibromine okay codes the protein which protein neurofibromine neurofibromine i will highlight uh i mean underline this uh it's important everything is important but just to see the main difference while the type 2 again so is nf2 tumor suppressor gene if you see basically we have um and this uh, codes for protein merlin so clue here so to differentiate between one and the other merlin is for type 2 and so i think that neuromodus type 1 is neurofibromine well if you see here in this corner i'm going to write the letter n i just oops sorry so letter n okay so one okay and then when i'm doing the neurofibromatosis type 2 this is i do like two ends together so one two and then i have m so i just said it like this m for merlin for type 2 and n for neurofibromine which is type 1. okay so probably is a way to remember but yeah clinical manifestation of each disease so how are going to be the clinical manifestation so in the fibromatosis type 1 the patient is going to present with cafe OLED spots so yeah so basically Cafe OLED spots also is going to have multiple neurofibromas. That was one of the things that we mentioned at the beginning, and it's going to have leech nodules. Okay. So leech nodules. So what it is leech nodules? So basically it is hamartomas of the iris occurring in neurofomeratosis. Yes, that we can see in neurofomeratosis. But let's see better a picture of those leech nodules. It is here the picture. Do you see all those things there at the iris? All those things. Yeah. So that's the leech nodules okay now let's continue neurofibromatosis type 2 what does the patient can have so the patient and the clinical manifestation is going to have bilateral acoustic neuromas so bilateral so again two for two bilateral is two bilateral acoustic neuromas this can be the, this 
this can be um, detected if we do a CT scan uh, we can see the tumor I'm going to show you a picture so let's just uh, put a picture here okay so whoop, there we go so this is for neurofibromatosis type 2 that was listed for neurofibromatosis type 1 and here in the neurofibromatosis type 2 that you can see the bilateral acoustic neuromas okay so now those patients that they have bilateral acoustic neuromas they can present with thanatos, vertigos, hearing loss all of those things okay now um, I'm sorry so that was a <laughs> I said that was a CT scan, but no, sorry, that was an MRI, MRI, okay, so yeah, yeah, so the, 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 now we're going to talk a little bit more about this, um, neuromas, okay, and let's just open this new slide here. So remember, uh, the most intracranial schwannomas are found at the cerebropontine angle at the at, at attached to the cranial nerve eight. So that means that when we are talking about the uh, intracranial schwannomas, okay, schwannomas. So those are found in the cerebropontine angle. So where are those found in the cere cerebellopontine angle and are attached and are attached to cranial nerve eight. Okay, cranial nerve eight um which is the one of those responsible for hearing okay okay so now the schwannomas when the patient had this so we already mentioned that they can get the acoustic neuromas so they can present also with they can present with um tinnitus they can present with very go so because the cranial nerve 8 is responsible for vestibular cochlear so for all those things so uh, also you can for the balance or all the, uh, i mean for yeah and hearing so because it's going to be uh, affected um so those bilateral is neuroma occur in this disease but Basically, this this is more clue for the type two instead of the type one. Now, those the, one more key point, key word here. So you remember that we were talking about that this one is the difference between neurofibromatosis type one and neurofibromatosis type two. Well, they should have something in common, I think. What do you think? So. So yeah, they have something in common. <coughs> the both are autosomal dominant. Okay, so basically we start with the difference and we see some more difference and more difference. And yes. <coughs> now, basically I think that this is the pretty much that we should learn about neurofibromatosis type one and type two and hopefully we can continue learning and thank you so much for watching and remember that we can do all things through christ to strengthen us god bless you